Wow. Evening all. Um, this may be on. Let's see what's going on here. Hey folks, I can see a few people in chat. Sorry I didn't do the pre-stream as usual. I completely forgot. I just, uh, <laughs> just sorry it was eight and then, oh shit, and hit the button. Uh, hello to Infinisol, Pimp, Sorted August, who are around. And, uh, hopefully a few others may be able to join us. Um... Audio and video is okay, thank you, sir. Um, so yeah, I'm a little. Uh, I I haven't touched Lisp in a couple of weeks now, <laughs> or, or like it's been a week and a half or something. I I kind of lost track. So I when was I last streaming? I suppose the first thing I should say is apologize to um, people who only watch this on YouTube. Um, I'm sorry that you didn't get to see the last episode. Kind of, uh, it was really bad. It was a mess, and so I didn't feel good putting it up so i didn't uh, it's still available on twitch if you want to see why i didn't put it up um yeah it's there for a bit longer it'll be gone in a couple of weeks um and i'm kind of okay with that hey i'm fiano good to see you um so yes the other week when was that um end of april kind of time we had the game jam that same week i had uh, my birthday and also had my last day at my previous job which was, you know, pretty intense and emotional after a good few years of working with such amazing people. Um, I was leaving to go and start making games full time. So that's what I'm doing now, uh, which is awesome. Um, at the moment, it's mostly focused on back end stuff. Uh, so I've been like up to here just in AWS documentation and all this kind of stuff and Docker things and just, ah, oh, just swamped getting my head into that space, which is a field I haven't worked in before. Um, also, uh, Dipping my toe into Erlang, which is just such a cool language, and I'm really, I'm really excited to play with that. And uh, so yeah, basically, there's been shit tons going on, and I've had to be full time, like day and night, on the job um, to try and get it into my head. Um, so I had this is this is me sitting down for the first time with Lisp again. In what feels like fucking ages. So what we're gonna try and do tonight? Sorted August hated the stream just start. It did indeed. I am sorry. I. Uh, didn't um do the pre-stream today i forgot <laughs> which will make my editing easier at the end but uh really isn't great for everyone else because that's normally like a nice a nice warning beforehand is oh that thing's gone live i've got a few minutes to grab a beer or a coffee or whatever um speaking of which so yeah what i would like to play with tonight we'll just see. we're gonna take it pretty easy uh it's kind of a work back into this kind of thing also apologies to anyone oh that's quite bright um, who has been filing issues on any of my repos in the last couple of weeks. Um, I, haven't been, I haven't been looking. I, I've seen the notifications come up. I'm sorry I haven't replied. Uh, yeah, I've been swamped. So yeah, I wanted to play with something like this. So this person is fantastic. Joyce, Minion Arts. I'm going to drop a link into the chat uh, quickly. So if you give me a second while I do that. Um... I want to start doing this effect um, because watching this in like Twitter with it all kind of compressed up is kind of annoying. I've popped out the video to here so we can have a look at it. And it's another flame effect, uh, but a slightly nicer one. And I just want to see if we can implement this um, or at least part of it. And it's, we're going to have a very different looking result because this is very heavy on the bloom. Um, and down sampling and all this kind of stuff so it's going to look different but if we can start getting this effect in shape um and then we'll we can either throw some bloom on it probably probably not today but we'll see um yeah that's what we're gonna do so the general idea is you have some you have a noise texture here and then you sample another noise texture um but you um move the sampling the place you're sampling using this uh this noise texture so you're distorting where you're sampling from um we're not going to use textures in our case we're just going to use noise functions see what that's like um and we also um like a uh, scroll using time and then we just make a flat hole gradient and multiply um says multiply this result a few times so it's a smooth line so i think that's um multiplying the gradient by itself a few times 
um, which would, yeah, that would, I mean, that would get us, yeah, I mean, actually it doesn't matter which order we do it in, but we'll raise this to, the, to some power and then multiply um, this result by this gradient. And then we'll have something. Now, all of these have a kind of rim around the edge and there, that's this bit down here, um, which is not written in the best way. Um, also, I'm seeing a, a couple of um, interesting issues here. We have um, a noise which is clearly like there's three 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 components to this noise or four components. Um, and in this line, they're taking they're doing dot a, which will be the w component. So they're taking one component from this noise, and then they're doing distort dot g and distort dot r. So taking one component means this is going to be a float. Um, which is, I guess, what fixed is here. I'm, I'm not sure if this is Unity's um, shader language. Could well be. Um, and then they're sampling G and R from it, which is slightly interesting because they're all going to be the same. Assuming it, you can uh, get components, uh, this will be the Y and X component um, from a float, which is just going to be the float again. So a little uncertain what's going on here. There is the uh, the shader code has been uh, linked in the tweet as well. When you look there, uh, the UV distort is a fixed four, which is slightly interesting. So we're going to try just doing the float version first, um, and otherwise we'll, you know, we'll generate a few noise values and use them instead, or a couple of noise values. We're just going to wing it and see what happens. We've got some time, but the first thing we're going to need to do is I would like to map it onto a, onto a sphere or overly kind of thing. Um, so we're going to draw one of those. I'd also like to be able to test it in a square. So we're going to do that as well. So let's put this... Well, we'll put it away for a minute. We'll bring it back when we need it. Um, yeah, Ponder Pim, it is cool stuff. That person is a magician. That's, it's so lovely. Actually, the latest stuff where I really want to get to sometime is uh, this shader, this triplanar noise being used for water. Look at this. That's fucking great. And it's adaptive to obviously whatever the mesh is. The fact that that's all one shader is really cool. Um, I think it's all one shader. So yeah, I would love to get us playing with these at some point. Because that would just be sweet. But we also need some bloom because everything we do from here um, looks so flat in comparison because we don't have any bloom. So we'll, we'll uh, drop that in at some point as well. So let's just get started. We'll do the basics. First thing we're going to do is we're going to render a sphere over here in the normal kind of GL fashion. So let's start with that. We're going to create a global variable called verts. And we're going to have a reset function. And we are going to say unless verts is already there, then we're going to set f verts to be something else. Um, Nineveh has um, some mesh functions that we've used before. This function will return two GPU arrays. It's got some parameters we can see down here. You can specify radius, lines, of latitude, longitude, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's going to return two GPU arrays in a list. So we do structuring bind V and I. The first GPU array is going to hold the vertices. The second GPU array holds the indices. Um, and so from this data, we're going to make a buffer stream. Um, <laughs> I apparently have, uh, I was trying to get set up with Erlang the other day, and so now I seem to have code completion um, in line, which I don't normally use, but I'm gonna try it out. Other than the horrible color scheme, it should be okay. Um, so V and index array is gonna be I. So that um, should be enough for us to get, to populate verts. So that's cool. So there's our, um, there's our sphere. It will be in a minute. Now we need to draw it. Now we're not going to bother with like world space and all that kind of stuff at the moment. We're just going to do everything in view space and we'll do it in the shader because it's so easy for us to change shaders that there's just no point with the indirection. Um, no idea what we're going to do in this yet, so I'm just going to call it foo. It's going to be taking vertices um, which are in the format GPNT because that's specified by this uh, these mesh functions. Um, return a few formats depending on the values. If you specified normals and text coordinates, you're going to get uh, position, normal, texture. So we're going to get that. One thing we are going to want, though, is we're going to want to put everything in perspective. 
Um, so I'm just going to pass that in so we don't calculate that for every vertex. There's no, I mean, we're not going to be straining the GPU in the slightest. Um, I'm not sure where I've called that vert. I'm going to change that and it's going to be uh, view to clip. It's the view to clip space transform. Okay, so we've got that. This is all kind of standard fair stuff we've done before. Um, so the position, which is going to be a vector 3, I'm just calling it plus 3 from my memory, um, is going to be the position from the vert. And then we're going to offset it into world space. So we could say, I, I mean, it's going to be in view space, sorry. So we're going to add something onto plus 3. Um, that is going to be, we can just say minus 10, which is going to move it into the scene. Um, we are going to then put it in clip space. So clip pos four um, is going to be the view to clip matrix um, multiplied by the b pos three, and this needs to be a vector four because we're multiplying it by a matrix four. So we're going to put one there, which is going to turn it into. It basically treats it as a position. Okay, so we've got that. Is that all we need? That's definitely what we need to return to begin with, CPOS 4. Um, but what else? We probably want the texture coordinates in the next part, so we'll just do text. I think that was correct. I hate the naming that I chose. I made these types. These are kind of predefined types in Keppel. I really hate the naming. I was, I was just such a noob then when I made these, so... I don't like it, but yeah, text is the accessor function that gets the texture coordinates. Uh, but yeah, that'll do. Vert, compile that, see what's freaked out about. It's not defun. You're meant to use defun G in this case. Because this is a GPU function. And everything's fine. Let's see what's going on. Love like some text. Hey man, good to see you. Pom de Pimp says, the water reminds me of the first episodes of your stream where the terrain worked. Yeah, man, that was ages ago. Um, not the same result, though, very much. Uh... <laughs> and Fiona's watching this on mobile, apparently. Dedication. I like it. Okay, so that's our vertex shader. Let's get a quick fragment shader going. Um, it, we're going to be taking the UV, which is going to be a VEC2. Uh, that's this value. Um, and right now we're not even going to use it. We're just going to make it red. Because we've got no texture or anything like this. I'm, I'm not even sure what we're going to do with this. This is probably going to be where we shove our um, our fancy fire shader. So let's, let's start with this. Is there anything else we need? Uh, no, probably not. Let's just make a pipeline, def pipeline G going to call it foo key line and we are going to take the foo vs which is taking a g oh, an argument of type g pmt and the other one is taking yeah vec2 and that's fragment shader so compile this compile this that should be fine um now we can go and render this so we are going to do map g uh, we're going to map over this pipeline we're going to be using the, we're mapping the stream of vertices over this pipeline. And then we've got to pass in the view to clip uh, matrix, which we now need to make. Um, let's just make it out here, PC. In fact, hmm. Let's jiggle this around a bit. Let's do let uh, res be the resolution of the current surface. Current surface, you don't actually need to specify the context of the current surface, it will just be implicitly the current context. Well, that's fine. Uh, do let's star. VC is going to be, right, there are some functions in RTG math for projection, perspective, um, and there's one that will actually just take a V2 and do the FOV and radians. Actually, no, we don't need to do that. But we'll take the v, take the uh, frame size as a vector two. So we pass in res there, which tells it the frame size. We're going to say the near is 0.1 and the far plane is um, 100. And the uh, field of view is going to be 45 degrees. We still need to set this. Um, 
we're going to set the viewport resolution of the current viewport to be res. All oh, right, nice. There we go. Um, so that's our sphere. Of course, we got no shading, so it looks like a circle. Um, in the example we're stealing from, uh, we're dealing with ovals. So let's just make it oval. Um, that means up here uh, when we have plus three. Let's just warp it a bit. Which is multiply plus three by one, one dot four, one. There we go. One dot three. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, place to start. Oh yeah, by the way, if, uh, for home gamers, um, this is the Play With Verts repo. Um, I can link that in the stream. One second, Play With Verts. Um, Okay, Sorted August is saying, I have a question about at uniform. How do you do this in common list, defining your own argument type? Or do you pass it yourself as a macro thing? It is in a macro, yes. Defund G, ooh, let me get on the right computer again. Defund G is a macro and um, we just, because we're using the same kind of format as like this, the same style of, uh, God, words have just left me. Uh, basically, we, we use the same kind of syntax as regular defund, so it looks very familiar. And I just, um, yeah, I just pass the arguments myself and just say, oh, at uniform, okay, these are the list of uniforms is everything after at uniform. Everything before that is the vertex, is the uh, varying inputs. Wow, man, it has been a little while since I touched this list stuff. But that's cool. So, yeah, we're um, in the Play With Verts uh, repo. There's a branch called episode 41. Um... And that is pushed, hopefully. Yep, there we go. So, I also wanted to have um, a quad drawn as well. Um, so let's just do a little vertex shader for that. The vert is going to be a vec2. And the result is going to be very simple. We're going to do... Uh, values. This is our normal thing that we've done every single time, which is vert um, 0, 1, and we do a plus uh, 0 0.5 times 0.5. And now I've said I've done it every time, this will probably be wrong. Oh, that's cool. And so we're going to make another little thing here, def, uh, which is quad p line is going to use uh, quad vs, just taking a vec2, and we're going to use the reuse the same fragment shader um, as we were using before, which means that when we update this, both of these pipelines are going to get updated at the same time. So we'll be, it's basically, we'll be drawing the same stuff, but it's whether we're mapping it onto a sphere or we're mapping it onto a quad. And that should be fine. Okay, so let's uh, test that the quad works as well. Um, that's going to be slightly different. We'll copy this, put it down here. We'll comment this out for a second and just actually, it's going to all be one line. There's no reason for this to be. There we go. Um, and this is quad p line, and instead we are going to pass in Nineveh has a function called get quad stream v2. I will actually put this down a new line. Invalid number of arguments for. What don't you like? Um, but once exactly to. Really? Oh yeah, we don't have a. Um, of course, we don't have a perspective matrix in that. So uh, do that. Say continue. It's freaking out. It's saying that. Oh yeah, we don't return two values from here. Um, so this should just be that. Continue. There we go. That looks a little strange. Why are you looking like that? <laughs> um, Vert effect two. 
that's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 should have been hmm why do I get the feeling we get bugs everywhere right nope that's not it and it won't be this that's just gonna make it full screen this is rather odd oh well We'll deal with this later. Can't have one of these streams without some weird fucking bugs turning up, so. That is good. Um, oh, it's actually probably that this is just. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is. That's rather strange. Doesn't matter. We'll be fine. So, let's start playing with the Fragment Shader stuff, and Barrett's here! Hey man, how good to see you! Okay, so, this is what we're working with. So the first part, we need a value for the distortion. Um, and they're just using one component of this, so we're gonna do the same. Um, seems we're gonna be switching backwards and forwards a lot. Let's see if we can hide these tree to Oh god, how does this work? This is not the resolution I like working. There we go. Let's see if we can work with that. While we're coding, we'll switch backwards and forwards. Okay, so here we are going to um, get the distort. And we're just going to get a Perlin noise value. Um, I'm going to just do CVV to find out what overloads are available. Um, and these are, this is looking up for GPU functions specifically. Um, so yeah, it can take a VEC2. So we'll just take UV and put that in there. Um, what we could do, just to see how things are going, we can um, say the result of this is just a distort, you know? Um, ooh, nasty. Oh yeah, probably we'll want to sample um, from 0 to 1. Let's just say we're going to do a variable p um, plus 0.5 uv. It's interesting. We don't need more weirdy shit. Surely we've got enough. Ah, oh, magic. Right. Um... Oops, P is undefined because let should be let star. There we go. There's a horrible seam down the middle, but uh, we'll kind of have to just make do with that for now. But yes, we have some noise on a ovoid. Let's uh, bring it a bit close to the camera because there's no reason for it to be so far away. There we go. Uh, let's check that how it looks on the quad. The distorted quad. Um, that is... Ah. Oh wait, I, hmm. am I doing something so stupidly simple here? Ah. Let's just get rid of these scenes, it made no difference. Yeah, this thing is going to be in the range. Minus, oh Chris, you're an idiot, that's why. It's meant to be like this. Primary value from the verdict stage must be a VEC4. Yes, it must. And it was meant to be like this, and this was meant to be like this. I knew, as I said, like we do every time, I'm like, you're fucking this up. I can tell. I could just feel it that it was fucking stuff up. There we go. Right, fine. That's what I expected to see. Um, right, so let's bring back the instructions. That's our distort. Woohoo. And we don't need this. Um, we don't need that. Well, we definitely don't need to offset it. That's, that was not necessary. Okay, we've got some noise. And uh, this looks like it's kind of in the range uh, 0 to 1. So let's bias. Whoops. Let's bias it over here. Uh, let's bias this to store. Actually, no, because we're going to use this to change sampling. So it doesn't really matter. Let's just make it, it, just make it nice to look at. So that, no, we don't need to do that. 
And then we're going to sample into another noise texture, so we can just do this again. Um, but this time we're going to offset it a bit. We are going to, again, we're not doing noise textures, we're doing noise functions. Um, but we're going to do vector, take x of p, and we're going to add it to, um, what do they do? They just subtract, you can add, to subtract, really doesn't matter, um, from the distort. Sure. X of distort. Actually, going to move this to a separate line. We're going to call it DUV, which is distorted UV. And we'll do DUV. Ooh. There's no applicable argument for the X when called with type float. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to do this. Um, let's just see what we get. Ooh, that looks okay. I can live with that. Um... And I can't actually remember what they called this. What was it? Result. Okay. Weird name. Result. So we go from distort to result. It's all wibbly. And uh, I wonder if it would look better if we have a distort 1 and a distort 0 and we just add something onto this. Just... Ah, let's just add five. Just just see what happens. Um, and let's do this distort one. Yeah, that looks a bit nicer. Again, just having them less connected but based on the same function is going to be all right. Okay, so we have some wibbly stuff, which is this part here. And depending on what noise functions we use here, we can get really different results. Hey, Johnny, nice to see you, man. Um... Next thing, we've got to make a gradient, um, which is easy. We'll just take the y coordinate of. Uh, let's see. Let's let's do this visually. Let's do it visually. Okay. So, ignore that. We'll just ignore that result entirely, and we are going to say we'll do it because eyes are really easily fucked up by color. I'm just going to do this as a vec four, um, and we'll do the y of the uv. Right. So that's a gradient. Um, and seeing as we want it to go from bright to dark, we'll just flip this. So we'll do, um, whoops. One minus that. Doesn't feel quite right, does it? This makes me question our UV values, but. Yeah, because that should be black at the top here. So that is wrong. Um, why would our UV be out of range? So the vert stuff, let's have a look at verts. Is a buffer stream. If we inspect it and go look at the GPU array, which is here, we can go and grab it and pull its data back and just sanity check. What we have here, okay, fell through, wanted, wanted a path name or string. That's exciting. What have I managed to break there? Ooh, there are problems. What are the odds that I've done some stupid, like, so when we were doing the game jam, I hacked a load of stuff into our game engine. Uh... But what if I did something nasty to Kepler as well? That would be worrying. Um, just do this pull. Ah, there hasn't been any pull G stuff in a while. This is confusing. GPU array, pull G on the GPU array. Should be fine. Okay. It freaks out when it's on our C array. What the fuck? Something has overridden that method. It must have, because I mean, why is. Because Tex is 
one of our functions from here. <laughs> what is this? Oh no, okay, this is gonna be, when we're pulling it, it's trying to, oh, right. Okay, yeah, we've overridden one of the methods from Keppel. That's our fault. Whoopsie do. Um, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought of that before. That's, um, and I know what it is. So basically what has happened is we have a helper function in here somewhere, uh, not now. Um, where are you? Assets. Cool text. And it has replaced um, a rather important function from elsewhere. So this guy um, should be load text or something or get text. Always read the warnings, kids, because you're probably overriding something. Let's just jump back to that's going to have been defined by the data type GPNT. So if we just do this. Continue. Oh, okay. Um, now if we do pull G, now we have a load of data. Interesting. And there is a lot of... Oh, of course, this is the... Um, sorry, this is the data for the sphere. And I was interested in the data for the quad. So it's the quad stream. Oh, well, still in lightning. Um, I'm going to have to remember not to do that in other projects. I'm pretty sure I have a few times. Let's pull the GPU array. Let's make the font actually readable for you guys again. And um, yeah, so it's going from minus one to one. That was all I was trying to check. Um, these values are going from minus one to one. So when we have our vertex shader for the quad, we add 0 0.5. Ah, no, that's why. I've done these backwards. So if I had multiplied by normal 0 0.5 and then added 0 0.5, this would have been correct. There we go. There's our, there's the darkness back again. Uh, because what we're trying to do is remap it into the range 0 to 1. So dividing by 0 0.5 would make it minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And then um, adding 0 0.5 would make it from 0 to 1. Fool of a took. It's what you get from doing other projects. Um, okay, so in the instructions way back, uh, when it says make a gradient and add it to the result, blah, 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 multiply this result a few times so it's smooth. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll raise the gradient to some power. Um, let's do this. So this is our gradient. So we do EXPT to the power of four. See, that shifts everything um we could probably plot that curve if we wanted to see uh what we've actually done that might be quite interesting let's see i haven't used the graphing functions in nineveh for ages um it was just graph it could be let's have a look yes graph takes a function and some uvs let's see what we get if we do that um take a lambda which takes a um xy which is a vec2 and we whoops um are going to do well we're going to do this and then we pass in uh uv and it freaks out it's saying it's a closure which is true um yeah like we don't want to use uv in this case we want to use xy um and it's still not liking it why what doesn't it like there is no applicable method for graph when called with a function that takes a vec2 and returns a float and a vec2. What does it want then? Um, I'm obviously being some kind of fool. Let's get rid of these old errors. Okay. It takes a function that takes a float and returns a float. Oh yeah, okay, fine. So, um... What we're going to do instead is it's meant to take a float. So it's take some value. Let's do this and just see what we get. Okay. Nice. Okay. So what we did originally was we 
had 1 minus y, which gives us this. As y increases, as, as this value increases, our value we're plotting decreases. And so we wanted to smooth it out. We wanted to change that curve because just it wasn't nice to look at. Um, so what we did is we raised it to a power. So we did this. Then we looked at the result. That's cool. And we just, as we, we picked four, and this is what it's doing to the colors. We can probably blend that together. So if we do, it's like, uh, what do you mean? Is it mix? Mix, start, and amount. I love this. Okay. So um, I thought there was a blend or something like this as well. I can't remember what I have. Interpolate between two values. But I had um, something else for playing with these. Ah, doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, we'll do that another time. But anyway, this is the... This is the curve we get when we're doing this, which looks a bit nicer. Let's get rid of our graph. In fact, we'll just put this up here and we'll comment it out. It's handy. Okay, so we've got our gradient and then we're just meant to multiply it with the distortion thing we made. So let's do that. Um, we'll call this grad. Red. Um, and then um, result times grad grag cool so we get something like this which is not a bad start um, and then multiply with a color gradient so we want to look between two colors um, and that's easy to do. And we'll do that based on y as well. And we might, actually, we might do that by, yeah, we might do that by the gradient. Let's see what's going on over in chat, because I've been ignoring you folks for too long. AK Karam, good to see you. Uh, I'm seeing what we do in the shadows references, so already I know this is good. Um... It's really nice to ha when you're up all night, Barrett. It's great to see you. Um, trying to get SBCL OSX working probably was trapped. Hey, man, did you make any progress on... Like, wait a second. What issue are you having? Because it might have been one I've seen, or a lot of us have seen. Um, can you paste that fire shader link? I did earlier, but I can definitely paste it again. One second. This is... The wonderful work of Joyce. Um, what have I done? Yes, of Minions Art. Let's have a look. Paste it. Um, what well, there's no middle finger emoji. That's bollocks. Um, it's like 50% of the things that need saying to anything at any given time. He's just flipping major birds. Um, grug. <laughs> yes, Grug. It's, uh, it's a budget alternative to Grog from the uh, Monkey Island universe. Right, let's see. Oh yeah, there's something we're not doing yet. We're not animating. That's bullshit. Let's do that now. Um, let's pass in a uniform. Uh, uniform and it's going to be now and it's going to be a float and uh, let's go and make sure both of these are going to pass it up it's now and there is a function called now so we can just call that boop, 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 boop. and now we've got to use it so we should go over here and we just add it to y let's stick it in here let's just see what happens if we do this Now that's not scrolling the source texture though. I think we actually want to go up here and do, hmm, yeah, this might, let's just multiply it by one for now, but zero and now. What? The wrong way. How dare you? Um,
Is that what we wanted? Hmm. No, probably not. We probably want to take this. Let's go fiddle with this some more. We probably only want to do that on the texture. Oh, wait a second. Blech. Let's have a look where they did it. They added time in when they were calculating result, which was they use it to modify where they were sampling. So in DUV, basically. So yeah, shoving in distort one. Really? This doesn't look very good, does it? Not sure about that. Of course, wait, no. I should be adding it in here. Let's try this. Let us try. That's a bit nicer. It looks like it's traveling in some direction now. Okay, so. Plus negative time. Right, that's kind of flowing in a more upward direction. It's a bit weird because of how we're calculating this, but meh. Um, P plus five. Positions of X2. Let's do this. That's nicer. There we go. That's going upward. Nice. That's what I want. And then, seeing as we've been playing with the quad version for ages, let's just see what it's done to our sphere. Okay, so we're getting some flowiness. Um, it's a bit dark. It's not too exciting yet. We've got that horrible seam facing towards us, which is just looking typical, but uh, that's fine. Um, we can play with our gradient to, yeah, just changing the position where everything, where it falls off, just lets us see more. But yeah, it's nicer when we deal with the, uh, kind of annoying that, again, flowing down in this one, up in the other one, so we can just fuck around with this, I suppose. Oh, no, of course, that's... Ah, ha, ha. Fine, we'll work with this for now. Let's go back to this guy. Then what do we do? Then we have a colored gradient that we're going to multiply this whole thing by. So we're going to have a mix between um, two values. Um, and we need a couple of colors. And I'm really not on the right operating system to be, like everything's, because it's tiling window manager, there's like, I haven't got, I actually don't know how to make floating windows in this. There is a way of doing it. I just never looked at that in Stump. Any Stump users know how to make, take a, um, a tiled window and make it a regular floating window. That would be super useful. Um, but otherwise, I kind of want to steal these colors. So I'm just going to take a screenshot quickly and uh, kick off GIMP and see what we've got in here. The laziest ways. <laughs> if you don't have taste, steal someone else's. All right, so roughly this color. What is this color? And you know it's just looking good because of the bloom. Uh, 9243255. Oh, I'll save me copying. Um, but it's not going to be this exactly, is it? It's going to be. Um, uh, interesting. Oh, divided by scalar. There we go. That's the numbers we wanted. You can just tell looking at them that they're beautiful. And some horrible approximation. So we're mixing between this color and... Ooh. And uh, this color, roughly. 
I do take color suggestions in the chat, so if you want to throw in some nice normalized color suggestions, um, I am welcome to. I'm happy to try them out. Welcome to try them out. Whatever words. Seven one thirty two two twenty eight. Put your favorite colors here. And the amount is going to be, well, we'll base it on grad, actually. Why not, eh? Why not? Um, oh, dear. OK, there was. No applicable method from the GLSL function, which is off screen. Oh no, I just moved the wrong thing. How dare you. VEC4 when called with VEC3. Hmm. It's just so dark. And this is, you know, it. Yeah. Let's do the badness. Oh, it looks amazing! <laughs> oh, dear. Actually, if we're going to modify time, let's do it down here. Make variable now, which is now times something. And change these to be variables. Cool. Groovy. So that's, I mean, not fantastic, but not too bad. Um, we get rid of the quad and put it on the sphere it looks horrifying so let's do something about that um, we should have all of the functions from our maths library available in all shaders now after a few couple of months ago so what we should be able to do is We do it M4 or M3 rotation around the x axis of, if I can never remember, radians 90. Oh, yeah, it's like half pi or whatever it is. Um, yeah, 90 degrees. As radians, no, 90, 180. And we're gonna, yeah, multiply this by V plus three. It's gone! Uh, it's because we've offset it before we, um, we rotate it. So now we've rotated it 180 degrees, which now means it's behind us. That is not so smart. Doesn't know what VPOS three is anymore. I don't know what anything is anymore. Um, let's do that. Okay. Hey, nice. And because we rotated it 180, the horrible seems on the back, which means it doesn't exist. Ooh. Fixing problems by hiding them. Why my life's a mess. Right. Um, cool. We have something that approximates bleh, nothing like this at all. Um, really interesting like how thick this is i wonder if it's this initial noise range because ah wait a second it definitely is um let's go and look at okay so we do a purlin noise where am i looking that's vertex shader we do a purlin noise to create the distortion the offset but and then we sample into another purlin noise using that offset that's fine but 
Um, it's in the range 0.1 to 1, so we're going to add 1 and divide by 2, um, which is going to, okay, so minus 1 to 1, and we half the range, like, yeah, we've shifted it up, so it would then be 0 to 2, and then we've half the range, so it's 0 to 1. Ah, okay, that's a little different. Let's get rid of this multiply and our other fudge factors. We'll bring that back in a second and start looking at this. Nope. Um, four. Okay, so that factor that we uh, shift everything by. That really has quite a large influence on. So let's, yeah, let's do this up again because it's nice when it's brighter. Even if we're just fucking colors everywhere, it doesn't matter. Um, let's play with this value, 0 0.8. Yeah. So we're taking the sampling value and we are... Ah, no, so let's... I'm trying to think of what these values are going to be. So minus 1 to 1. Pushing in 1.2. And we get more solid there. That's interesting. There's some things we should do though. We should probably um, saturate this and also do the same with the gradient. So let's do that now. Let's uh, set this back to one. Let's saturate this, which hasn't made too much difference. Saturate this, oh, which actually didn't make much difference either. Okay, fair enough. Kind of cool though, that's fun. It'd be nice to change the noise and scale and stuff like this and see what we get. Let's change this down to four. Change it up to 20. Um, and we can change these values based on all sorts of stuff. What did we have added before? I thought it was 10. It just looks different now to me. I'm going to undo this. I want to know where I was. Oh, yeah, it's 0.1. Something. There we go. Actually, probably looks slightly better on the stream because uh, the <laughs> compression is cutting out the blacks a bit. But what's going on over in chat? <laughs> One-eyed grug. <laughs> um. Yeah, pi is 180. Um, I broke something? What? Uh, Johnny's saying, could you use smooth step to get uh, that guard edge? I haven't looked at the original, but I'm guessing it sampled the texture for its gradients so its cutoffs can be controlled. Well, that's interesting. Oh, hard edge, I was going to say. That was a bit, one of the bits I didn't understand. Uh, could do a smooth step to get that hard edge. So, like, wouldn't that be the same as just taking from Y? Maybe? Because that would make it... Smooth step's going to be a... No, wait. Oh, no, no, no. All right, I'm forgetting what's what. I should just plot smooth step so I can remind myself what it looks like. Smooth step. Let's bring this back. That's not what I expected at all. Um... I'm quite bewildered. But Luna... I can't even speak. 
Why does that look so weird? We haven't fucked with UV. UV's coming in as it was. No. Oh! He is so smart. Right, we're... <laughs> we've got a graph that we're trying to map onto a sphere. That is going to be an issue. Okay, so there's our function from before. Um, so X looks like that. Smooth step. Um, takes, let's get the docs. Oh, I love having documentation. Um, specifies the value of the lower edge, uh, specifies the value of the upper edge, and so you're doing a Hermite interpolation. Um, so we would do x between, let's just do 0 and, zero and 1. What does that do? Okay, and if we change these to be 0 0.3, gotcha, yeah, okay. Yeah, actually this will be, uh, this definitely could be a way of controlling that, can we? Nice. Cool, something to think about. Uh, ooh, right, what else to fuck with? The other, actually, what time are we at? Oh, we haven't even finished the first hour yet. Nice. Let's get rid of GIMP. Actually, no, let's leave it there. There's probably some things I can knock out of that later. Um, the other bit I wanted to get done before the end, actually, was this extra rim edge. And then we'll start playing with some of these different bits and bobs, like the smooth step, which actually be really cool. Okay, so increase the result size after the gradient is added. The gradient is added. Oh, they, mm, interesting. Wait a sec, so there, mm. oh, that's kind of odd. So this actually, this is something I haven't paid, paid attention to before. I was m combining the gradient using a multiply because that made sense to me, but it sounds like they're just adding it to the result and then multiplying this result a few times. Okay, we are, we are going to check out the code. One second, let's bring this over here. Because this sounds weird. Right. Where's Gradient? It's so bright. Make it stop. Right. Um, man, I love Quake 2. Yeah. They get the noise. They, oh, they're using a shape mask. Oh, so they're not even mapping it onto an object by the sound of it. That's surprising. Um, they're adding the... Okay, so, so they're lurping between a couple of values. Right. This is interesting. Okay, so they, they look between 2 and 0. They add that to the... Um, they add that to the noise. And then... Oh, this is some other shape thing that I haven't seen yet. Then they Did they do anything else to that gradient blend up here? Not at all. It's just a straight up blur. This is sorry. I'm, I I know I'm going over the same stuff again and again. I'm just slightly conf just slightly surprised. Um, hard is what? What I'm, what I'm surprised about, what I'm trying to look for here is the bit where it says, ooh, that looks weird inverted. 
where it says multiply this result a few times so it's a smooth line. So something to do with the gradient and the result, they're multiplying a few times. Let's just try and find that. If I could find that, it would make a lot more sense. This is not it. That's the rim. That's the color. Is It's this, isn't it? They're saturating, okay. That's super interesting. Hard, wherever hard is. I guess hard is a parameter they're passing in. Yeah, I guess that's. I, I'm, I'm assuming this stuff is uniform data. I'm not so used to. Uh, here we go. Hard, hard cutoff. Rage zero, one to forty. And it defaults at thirty. How about that? This is really interesting. So let's say it was thirty. Let's say it was 30. Then they make a gradient between zero and two. They get a noise value. Yeah, and add on this value. And then they multiply it by some size number and then saturate that immediately. So I mean, this is, it's gonna be kind of weird because that's gonna saturate really hard. I guess that's why they've got that really chunky block down the bottom. I mean, it works. It looks nice. It's just surprising. Oh. To each their own, I guess. Yeah, the saturate thing is to create that hard edge. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, because everything's going to get... Because it's the... Of course, yeah, this is being multiplied. See, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of the colors and, and zero to one getting clamped. Of course, that doesn't matter at all because all these values are, yeah, but wait a second. But flame is being then being multiplied by color, which is gonna be one. Yeah, no, that's that's it. Okay, fine. Tell you what, let's, let's try and do it their way. Um, they have their gradient from zero to two. Let's start with that. Actually, I'm going to save this first because we've got something that's kind of working. Kind of working. Is it gone? Nope. Now it's gone. Noise. Um, yeah, let's try and replicate it somehow. So, gradient radio. Um, is from zero to two. Let's get our uh, exponents and saturates out of here. Um, whoa. Um, we get the noise and we add it to the noise instead of uh, multiplying it. So we take the result and we don't mix this by grad at all. Wait a second, call, okay. So, um, so result, it's going to be uh, results, not times. I keep going for times, plus grad. Um, and then they multiply that pretty hard by, uh, by hard. So they were starting with 30. So let's do hard is 30. Uh, hard. Um, boom! It's just super harsh. This is our uh, color ramp. Oh yeah, and they, they saturate that immediately afterwards, don't they? So multiply by hard. Oh no, where is it? Multiply by hard and saturate. Yeah, okay. Surprising. Um... And then, yes. And then what? Now we probably don't need to remap our distortion here. 
because it doesn't matter what range it's in so much. Oof, dear me though. That's nasty. Um, what am I missing? Do, do, do. I mean, this kind of makes sense to me, like, and everything's getting saturated the fuck out. Um... Because that number's going to be really high. The thing is, as well, I'm not sure if... Um... Wait a second, I'm going to go through the chat first. One of the things I'm not sure about is whether um, they're going through a... Um, gamma correction or anything like that afterwards, or if they're like using one of the tone mapping operators to bring it down into a sensible range or something like this, or what? I mean, oops, one second, let's just do. Um. Oh, not grad. Wait a second, we're doing result. Oh no, then we, yeah, we've done that. Something like this. Ugh, Jesus. Um, might still want to ramp it. Oh, Jesus. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fool of a took. Oh, no. That's awful. Um, could saturate that, I suppose. Yeah, we're just moving that line now, but we've killed everything else. Um... Never mind. Never mind that. It's just getting worse. Um, tone map, Reinhardt. Uh, what's the values for that? Some exposure value. Oh, come on. What do you want? What do you want from me? Oh, it's a VEC3. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, fool of a took. We've still got our multiply by four in there. One second. Before we go shoving other shit in here, we really should take off the thing that's definitely blowing it all out. Um, and then do tone map Reinhard. Um, get rid of the VEC4 stuff, put that around the outside. And then do some kind of exposure value to bring it back into some... Ah, what? Oh, that's a very disappointing result. Oh, wait, yeah, if we're doing that, then... Never mind. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. Now it's going to be zero. Nope. Forget that plan. <laughs> it was not that. Um... They were saturating the result. That was the last thing. Okay, enough, enough flute fruitlessly smashing away on this. Let's uh, look at the comments and see what it was. Because um, I know Johnny was talking, and that means there'll be good information down here. Um, you want nice hard edges, so adding makes sense. Removing all the stuff at the bottom, basically. Yeah, they're using multiple UVs as well, though. Which might actually live on the mesh unless set further up. It's the saturate, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Darius is saying, Johnny, aren't you the guy responsible for baggers not streaming last week? Sort of? <laughs> um, yeah, that's the thing. Like, you're clamping that between 0 and 1. So I understand that everything, like, everything that's above 1 is going to get clamped to 1. And everything obviously below 0 we're cutting off because it doesn't matter anyway. But, uh, yeah. 
be nice to control this position a bit better, I guess. Oh, which I guess we do there. Um... So saturate is uh, for creating the shape and then they bring the color back in. Used to do this a lot and until I started using small, smooth step for more control. Because uh, you end up with a lot of random numbers otherwise. Yes, that's what I'm seeing so far. Lava lamp. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it was actually more pleasing before when it was softer. Everything being pushed up so high in that range, just um, like so much of it gets clamped out. Maybe it looks better on the, the uh, sphere though, who knows? Um, not that one, this one. Not really. <laughs> um, whew, right. I'm just just interested when I'm looking at the numbers. I'm surprised how. Um, Okay, let's think about this a bit. Yeah, so completely washed out here. I've got this spread really high. So I actually, yeah, I need to bring, I need to, yeah, I need to bring this down. Okay, yeah, I, I see why you're talking about the smooth step now as well. Um, yeah, like, so if we replaced the gradient with smooth step. And do like, zero to one by, um, and then we use um, the Y of UV. Yeah, obviously it'll have to be. Um, one minus Y of UV. And then we can do stuff, I guess, like 0 0.6. Oh no, not that way, the other way. Huh. Um, didn't expect that quite yet. So wait, let me, let, me, <laughs> let me get these values. So that brings it down. Uh, I'm imagining this curve backwards, aren't I? Maybe I should be doing one minus this whole thing. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. But in that case, we can just do one to zero, um, which is already better. So then it's... Um, And then we can do one to minus one, I suppose. And yeah, control more where that line is. Um, I'm a little, a little actually confused by what values are coming out of this right now. So I'm just gonna do vec four on grad. What the fuck? That looks like a bug. I'm actually really surprised by that. So it thinks there is a... Oh, I can see it. Okay. Get rid of these. So I want to see how playing with this function changes things here. So we were doing one to zero, which is like this. Do one to minus one, one to minus two. Wait, no, I'm doing this wrong, aren't I? Yeah, okay, oh, fuck. Of course, smooth step, the first value is the position, and the other values, am I doing, no, no they're not. <laughs> Look at the docs again, right, so edge zero, edge one, and x. We're gonna go between zero and one, zero here, one there. Okay, 
So we should do 1 minus on this to flip it upside down. Okay. Right. That That's what I was looking for. Okay. So now if we comment out this, yeah, we get a much harder line on that transition there. But we still get all of this stuff, which is kind of... Um, Kind of disappointing. That's why I was surprised about the gradient not being um, being added rather than multiplied because of like it allows you to control where the thing will end a bit better in my head. Um, I'd love actually I'd love to hear your input on that. Like I need to look at um. Do, do, do. Johnny Rue was think I was thinking instead of the saturate. Um, sorry, I may have because I because I went off into my own head here. I've actually lost track of it. So we're saying that this saturate, uh, Johnny, was the one you were wanting to replace. Oh, so you were thinking of maybe of keeping the gradient as it was, but using the smooth step here. That I could understand more, actually. I guess we could just do a... Um... Yeah. Johnny's saying maybe multiply uh, the result with another gradient to remove the bit at the top. Definitely could do. Yeah, so maybe if... Let's have a look. I'm really interested by this now. Hmm. Yeah, so rather than doing a saturate, we could do this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't quite what I meant, but um, oh, actually, I'm I'm gonna need to. If I'm doing this. I'm gonna have to visualize this as well because this is gonna get messy. So what I generally want is I want this bit to be like to be full color here, and then transition into the flames. So if we look at grad again. Um, I guess I want to bring this down. Yeah, and keep that transition a little softer. Because then if we did them, like, then if, ah, I really need to play with this and see. Then if this was a multiply, ah, but it's so hard. But is that something that's just controllable now? That, Maybe. But we could keep this as a straight up gradient. Um, and use that as the input to some other stuff. Now their gradient, of course, was um, 0 to 2. So let's put that back in. Now we're going to get that really hard position again. Um, and then instead of saturating here, thinking maybe we use a smooth step. Let's take hard down to one for a bit as well. What? Oh yeah, because um, this is nil, which is a boolean. Um, so let's do that. Take hard down. Let's do a smooth step here. 
from zero to one and uh, do it based on M Y. Okay, now we're talking. Huh, that actually wasn't the result I expected. Because we're meant to be doing one minus? Because we're meant to be doing one minus. Not like that though. Uh, yeah, I'm controlling the wrong end of this, aren't I? Ah, my brain, my brain isn't handling this at all. Right, uh, let's call this foo. Let's put foo here and let's go and visualize foo so I can see what's going on. Okay, I wanna do the complete opposite of this. So, like this, but uh, Of course, this is. Oh right, we can actually get... don't need to use invoy here. We can use yuv, and then we go from one to zero. Okay. Bringing this back. Is that the way I want to think about it? Because I want to go from one down here, one sorry down here, to zero around here. And again, I'm putting the, I'm doing this value wrong. What the hell? Yeah, the, oh, I get myself so confused. Right, edge zero, edge one, and amount. This is the amount. These are the two edges. So we're going. From, we're always going from zero to one. That's the goal. So this is just one of those things from like live stream brain fart kind of thing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that, but a bit more controllable, I guess. Um, Interesting. Got to look at that error now because where did that come from? I'm guessing the same kind of thing as before, but I don't quite see it yet. This might be a bug somewhere else. Let's have a look. If I just go further back in this call stack and see what's being compiled. Um, oh yeah, look at this. I think I know what this is. Right, so if I go to, this is a bug in another library. It is in RTG math. And it is a definition of lerp, which should just be mix. I don't know why it's defined explicitly, but I can go and fix that. Um, go into vary, go into base maths. There's going to be lerp in here somewhere, and here it is. And you can see that I've left, because I've been, I was porting this from the Lisp code, and the Lisp code had a uh, type declaration for the return. But this is also stupid because we should just be using mix. Something like this. Float, 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 return, float. I think that's right. Just make sure that. Um, Value, value, amount. 
value, value, amount. Yes. Cool. We're good. Let's uh, get rid of this. Didn't like it though. Of course. A, B, X. Makes sense. Recently updated code and stuff. Or recently added code. Don't need that. Okay, so. have some stuff that's working. The cutoff is so hard here that I'm not super happy with that. I would like to take result and maybe modify that a little. That was a bit more extreme than I expected. Um, wait a second, really? Oh, why? Why, why, why? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I just confused myself again. Because it, is it because this was smooth step before? Yes. Right. Yeah, that's what we had. Let's have a look. What was I wanting to play with? Oh, yeah, this was... Um, Wanted to multiply things, yeah, to get a bit more space between those flames. Um, it'd actually be good to just do a slightly less value here and then bias by something, bring that end up. Yeah, okay. It's a bit shitty that's just wrapped around the bottom there, so let's go and play with our smooth step and move this up to something like minus 0.9, 0.5, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.
This is cool. That's pretty cool. I don't know what I'm up to now, but yeah, uh, that works. <laughs> what other? I had, I had some other stupid noises in there, I'm pretty sure. Let's go get that list again. Um, actually, let's just go and look at the package. Uh, Nineveh package noise. Okay, so what does it export? There's Perlin noise, Cubist noise, cellular noise, polka dot noise. Gotta try that. Let's Polka dot noise. No! Doesn't take just a VEC2. What does it take? It takes a VEC2 and a radius. <laughs> low and high for our polka dots. Awesome. Uh, 0.1 and 0.3. Ooh. 0.5. Let's try bigger starting size and. I don't like it, but it is interesting. That's weird. Let's try stars noise. What? Uh, what's the arguments for this? Probability threshold, max dimension, max dimness. Two of a radius. <laughs> you can tell I didn't write these, but I ported them from a fantastic um, library online. Um, but there are some of these goofy ones like Star Noise, which I just love. Um, 0 0.4 and max dimness is 0.8. Two of a radius is... Let's just try two. Let's start with that. Are there stars in there? Actually, it doesn't look bad. I can't see the stars, but... Uh... Ugh. That's not so nice. Is that really the stars noise? How strange. Oh, it's probably because I'm sampling it in a really weird way. Yeah, because we're sampling with a displaced texture as well, so we're getting all kind of weird results. We should actually try these ones use the weird functions on the distort and see what kind of results we get there. Um, <laughs> Johnny, well, that one is less neat. Yes, it is, as you say, less neat. Uh, hermite noise and value hermite noise. What are you? Um, actually want to check out some of these what would have been cool is like so the derivative of um a given noise should be the gradient which we could use in place of the distort we could use x and y of the derivative of perlin noise um that could be interesting but i haven't really validated the uh, derivative version so this might be a mess so, uh, dystopia um, is going to be Perlin noise um, derivative, and the arguments for that are just a vector two. So we'll use the position just like before, and then we'll take dystopia and we'll take the. Uh... Oh wait, what? Have we been sampling X and X the whole time? Well, that's stupid. I want to see what our Perlin noise looks like again now. Oh, God damn it. Um, take this and just wind it back for a bit. This might screw up the parens. This is one of the times where you just have to hope. Okay, that actually looks nicer. God damn it. <laughs> All right, so if we take X of 
instead of distort and distort one, we do x of the derip. Dystopia and why I've just we're getting near the end actually, so we it's about time that I broke this fundamentally. Like that. Oh, that's exactly what we want. A complete disaster. Yeah. I'm not convinced that that function's implemented properly. <laughs> These nice big chugs here. What the fuck have I done there? I, I'm willing to bet that I've screwed up something with the um Uh, how I'm using the results from the hashing, the integer hashing function that feeds the rest of the noise. So anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, let's get rid of that and pretend it didn't happen. As is our want. And we'll go back to distort and distort one. Oh, everything's fine. Who knew? Um, and... So yeah, I wanted to mess with these guys. I should, um, let's do a, let's make another function that we use for the distort. D fun G, uh, disk noise, and it's gonna take a position that's a, let's say vector. And Oh, wait, is that what I want to do? No. And now it's just Perlin noise. Of pos. I had some logic in my head when I started doing this, but I'm kind of forgetting what it was now. Oh, shit, yes, I know, I know, I wrote the wrong thing. Um. Then we can just change this function to affect this stuff. Oh yeah, it was just so I didn't have to change it in two places each time. That's what I was, what I was thinking. So now if we use some other function for the distortion, then um, we could get some interesting results. So let's go and try the cellular noise again, seeing as that gave such interesting results. We'll change, well, we can do cellular noise against cellular noise. That would be kind of interesting. That feels more like water all of a sudden. Um, let's, I guess because these things are lining up quite a bit too much. So let's take this to Perlin noise. Ah, now you see the cellular artifacts a lot more. Because we're not doing heavy distortion on the... Um, yeah, we're not distorting the index into the cellular noise. So we get something like this. And I bet now if we go for uh, whatever it was, fucking stars noise, um, 0.4 max dimness is 0.8 and 2 over radius is 0.5. That again. Stars doesn't look great. I'm expecting. <laughs> bet there's a bug in there somewhere too. There's that polka dot noise. Didn't look entirely fucking insane if I remember. Well, I mean it didn't look good, but radius low is 0.1, radius high is 0.8, um, and that should be a lot. There we go. Looks horrible though. <laughs> of course, that's yeah. We're scrolling the polka dot noise and not the. Um, Perlin noise. Let's actually look at that. This is the source noise. This is the distort noise. So actually, they're using a constant distort. And um, so I'm probably actually scrolling the wrong part. I should be screw. I should take this. You can feel it coming. You can just feel that I'm about to start breaking stuff quite majorly. Um, and have that noise scrolling. I don't know. 
I'm not actually sure what I prefer. Maybe both. Have them scrolling at different speeds, have that interacting. Because if I take this back to the Perlin noise, so we have something at least that we kind of understand. Yeah, you know, it's all right, actually. There we go. Ah. Oh. Well, that actually is roughly what I wanted to achieve. Oh no, the one thing actually we haven't done is we haven't done the edge. Let's see if we can, um... Let's get this back to Perlin noise again, because that... No, what was the one that looked nice? Actually, the one that looked... Ugh, not Perlin noise noise. Chris, stop hammering keys and think for a second. Um... Perlin noise and cellular noise down here looked kind of nice. Oh yeah, it's kind of groovy. So I want to keep that. Um, I'll just call it ooh. Zero, zero, zero? Almost. Something like that though. That's the kind of stuff, those kind of mistakes where you almost like, you could see what your brain was going for, but it wasn't what you were thinking of. That's the kind of shit that happens really frequently to me and makes me think, oh, fuck, that's it. It's dementia. It's kicking in now. Uh, and uh, those mistakes all the time. And it's always an approximation. So I'll try and write a word, and I'll get, like, a synonym for the word get written down or something like this. And it's like, ah, uh, there's some horrible misfiring in my brain. I'm going to die. But, you know, in a happy way. Um... It's just disturbing to see how fucking odd the inside of your head is, just as you're typing. So, swing and a miss. Right, okay, so. What was the last bit? There was a last bit. Increase the result size after the gradient is added and subtract the fire so you're left with a rim. Add this to the fire. That makes sense. I'm going to actually look up. And in here, um, colored flame edge. So they're saying noise flame edge, color flame edge. So this is the bit, and then you add it to the final result. Let's just take this and go over here. Dump it down here. Um, Ah. Right. Um, and this is what's left. So, this is the saturate. Okay, no, this is this is a new thing. Let's do this just down here. Variable names are amazing. So, oh yeah, we'll just call it rim. Is saturate. The noise plus edge. So we're adding some factor anyway. So let's define that. That's going to be just like uh, hard was. Um, which is a tweakable value. Let's see what kind of range they were tweaking within. Edge was between 0 and 2. So let's just start with 1. And we can mess with this. Um, we're going to do something plus edge. Now, they call it noise A. I think that's our result. Um, we should check that out, though. Because it would be a bummer to get that wrong. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so what they called result here with the distort and all that kind of stuff is noise here. So this is, so yeah, this is a result. One component of result, which I think is a float in ours anyway. Um, yeah, it's a float anyway. Hmm. 
this is result plus edge, which makes sense. And then they subtract flame bef oh no, that's after the saturate. If we just look at the friends there, they subtract flame afterwards. Cool. And that makes sense. I can see why that's being done. And flame in this case is um Oh, that's interesting actually. Is that Flame is going to be Is that gonna be result times color? This is saturate. Oh no, this is after multiplying by hard and saturating, which was... Did I get rid of that? I think I might have. Oh no, there it is. Oh yeah, but we uh, corrected it with a smooth step. Okay, so it's just doing this. And then rim color is times rim by gradient tint. What do they use gradient tint for? Ah, it's a separate lerp for, uh, for something else. Let's see, gradient main, gradient tint, gradient blend. What if I'm lazy? What if I don't want to do that? What if I just use color? Is that going to look terrible? And then I have to add them together. Right, this is going to be a uh, flame curl bar and grim curl. And that's up here, so. Flame color is that. <laughs> Yeah, well, the color is going to be the same, isn't it? So that's not going to be any good. Um, we are going to need a different. If we if we just do um, color times two, woof, that was unexpected. Looks kind of cool though. Don't entirely understand what I just did. What's the value of color then? Dark to light. Right. So if I multiplied that by two, and it's not some dramatic change, it's just one end's brighter. Well, it's all brighter, sorry. So. <laughs> does look dope though. Um, I'm just wondering why this made areas darker. Right? Oh, because gradient is uh is insane. How are they mixing their colors? They've probably got it on a more sensible value. Yeah. Ah, oh, who knows though? <laughs> what values they're using there? So it's well, I mean, it's UV, so it's probably between zero and one plus some offset. Um, yeah, it's interesting. This does have a lot of like slam. Any place that we can throw a weird value in it, just make it parameterizable, and then we can just play with sliders and stuff. Which I mean, I can't fault that. I do exactly the same. But it is a, uh, it is interesting to look at this. And you're looking for the reason for certain things. And it might just be because it was cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, this could actually just be um, imply. That actually makes more sense now. Um,
And again, we lose. Hold on. <laughs> that actually doesn't make sense, even with that gradient thing. It would require rim to be okay. Yeah, we're getting ah, uh, we're getting very negative values in a lot of places. It's interesting that saturates on the inside. I would actually expect the saturate to be out here. Um, what if we just, rather than putting a sensible color for this, let's just make it red for now. This is gonna be fucking disgusting, but. Um, I want to see where it's actually used. Okay, so right now it's used nowhere. Nowhere at all. Um, it's used all here? Oh yeah, because... Actually, this is kind of interesting. <laughs> if everywhere that there is noise, like if the noise value is zero, which then we're going to add something to it. And then we're going to subtract. And we're going to multiply it. So it's now a bigger value. So zero is now, say, one. If the edge is one, this is now one. And then one times 30 in this case. Um, would be yeah that gives us 30 and then we're subtracting flame so i must be wrong in the relationship between noise and flame here because yep okay let's have a quick look at this we might just leave it out but Noise is sampling straight from the texture. Flame is once it's multiplied by 30. Okay, so let's take this because it's kind of interesting. So it's a biased version of the noise minus the noise. But in places where the noise is zero, this is just going to give us exactly this, some color. That feels weird, man. That doesn't seem quite right. Unless I'm not understanding how this is combined. They're just added together. Which is what we do. I don't quite get that bit, I must admit. Oh, it clearly works in their thing. So it's just me, my implementation doesn't line up with theirs, but it's, it's just interesting. In the places where the noise is zero, we're gonna get some value. In places where the noise, like in places where the noise is zero, this whole thing, flame is gonna be zero. And this is going to be above zero quite a bit above zero and then minus zero so this is going to, everywhere that the noise is zero this rim is going to be above zero and then we multiply that by some color that doesn't quite make sense in my head um, Jennery is saying, so I think it's to create the edge you see with different colors. Yeah, definitely. Um, that makes, uh, that makes total sense. That's what they were saying here. So this extra rim edge, which is this part here. Um, uh, 
but it's just interesting that again like this must be hmm Do not get it. I do not. Oh, what have I done? Oh, yeah, I just got rid of edge. Full of a took. So, if instead. Where's the uh, sampling? Here. this and take result two. This might be complete bullshit, but I'm just going to try it. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> um, does it show up anywhere? Only way down in the low areas. It's kind of strange. Um, oh wait, did I add anything here? Oh yeah, I did. Um, nope. I'm a. Uh, This is going to be wrong. This is going to be a stretched version, but yeah. And again, I get start getting haziness at the top, so it's just a displaced. Nah. Nope. That's not going nowhere. Never mind. Right. Okay. So. Didn't get the rim bit done just because I didn't work out really what that meant. But I'll probably look at it off stream. And um, I'm sure a bunch of you guys have already worked out what the issue was. So what I'll do for now is I'll just take the rim stuff and comment it out. Same with this. Um, and that gets us back to the thing that was kind of, kind of nice before. Um, No, no rim. And that pretty much wraps us up for the week. Um, yeah. 
thanks so much for stopping by. I have, I'm actually uh, free now. Um, so if there's anything you want to uh, yell, ask, blah, 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 that kind of stuff, you have now while I drink some coffee and read your messages. Um, Tony saying basically this and has a nice link. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, totally. That's the uh, that, that's the effect. That is what I'm going for. And I'm just not not getting it. Or rather, I can't see why. Um, Just with this stuff, I'm just surprised. I'm not. I'm not surprised to see the the uh, the the um, edge being put on all the rest of the um, sphere, and so I'm wondering what stops that from happening in their implementation. I think it's just yeah. I think I think I'm screwing something subtly up, but that'll be fine. That'll uh, be something I can work out. I'll probably chat to you offline about that actually at some point because there's something I'm not quite seeing, but that's okay. Thanks, guys. That's really nice. It's good to be back. Um, I think I, I'd like to... So, uh, oh yeah, the, the game engine thing. I uh, threw all kinds of shit into that when we were doing the game jam. Basically, every time I needed something, I threw it in. And some of those things broke our core assumptions of uh, what the thing should be. As in, things only know about themselves. Some of those... Uh, some of those ent The entries were a mess. I spent far too... As usual, uh, tooling broke... Um, so I spent loads of time working on engine rather than working on the intro on working on the um, entry and so uh, I only got two games done during the, during the jam which was very disappointing um, from a like I was hoping to get you know three or maybe more done um, but I spent a lot of the time I had three days where I was basically out of action because of uh, life stuff and then I um, a lot of time fixing other bugs of course those are done now so that is fixed but there's, there's a lot of stuff there's some things that are just simple we need a better collision system in general we need to be able to query the exact actor and for that i think we'll just go back to a more traditional broad phase and um like broad phase with a quad tree and then just uh doing a b collisions testing for uh the rest of the stuff which would be cool um I know before I do much more on that um, engine, the uh, daft one, we should probably, like, I, I should go and clean all that stuff up, either on stream or off stream. And I'm really not looking forward to that. I'm quite happy to put that down for a good few weeks and do stuff like this. Because um, it's just kind of fun to do something a little more straightforward visuals and uh, learn some stuff. Because this is educational for me as well. Got to get more, got to get more practice. Uh, Johnny's saying it's easier just to build a gradient first and then create the mask instead of mixing the colors at the end. All right, that's uh, that sounds sensible to me. That's really cool. Oh man, it's just so addictive. I know if I look too much, I'll. Uh... Anyway, yes, that's that's all I think. Um... Okay, Graham's saying tool always breaks at the worst possible times. Um... They do indeed. They do indeed. Right. Peace, folks. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll catch you next time, and I will put this one online. Ciao!